The Darkbase Pro 900 isn't a new case. In fact, at this point, it's over two years old. I've never personally owned one, but I have built in several, and I have a good amount of hands-on experience with Be Quiet's premium ATX full tower. I always had a generally positive experience, but for a $250 to $300 product, it always just felt like it was missing a thing or two. That's why I was so excited when this showed up at the office a couple weeks ago, the Darkbase Pro 900 Revision 2. Let's first touch on the things that carry over from the original to this new version that I really like. As with most Be Quiet products, the build quality, premium materials, the craftsmanship, and attention to detail is just top notch. Everything from the perfect fitting black rimmed side panel tempered glass, to the reversible sound deadening front door, to the colored accent trim has alignment, contouring, style, and function that shows just how much time Be Quiet's engineering team spent on designing this case. There's no escaping the fact that this is a large tower, but the contours, the subtle curves and lines around the exterior and the configuration of the interior compartment really makes this feel more akin to, let's say a large mid tower than a behemoth like the Fantex Enthu Elite. We also see the return of the Qi charger at the top of the case, although to be fair, the only time I've ever used it is to test to make sure it was working. Given that the Darkbase 900 is fairly tall, unless you have it sitting on the floor or you're fairly lanky, reaching up to the top to grab your phone every time you get a notification could get to be a little tedious. Still though, it's a small value add overall without any real downside. The power cabling is tucked away neatly and it doesn't take away from the case's appearance in any meaningful way. Although I didn't take advantage of this option when putting together my test system, as with the original 900 and the newer 700, the entire interior of the case is modular and reversible. You can flip around the motherboard tray to face the other direction if you'd rather have your case on your desk to your left rather than on your right. This does require removal of quite a few screws and mounting posts as you will have to flip the motherboard tray the rear case wall, the power supply shroud, and the glass window. But Be Quiet actually has a video on their website that shows you exactly how to attack this project. New features in this Revision 2 model are highlighted by, of course, the large and modular power supply shroud. This isn't just a bent piece of steel that Be Quiet wedged into an existing design. It's similar to the implementation of the power supply shroud on their excellent Darkbase 700, where the top pieces of the shroud are removable to allow for airflow. Only this time they also built in a neat recessed center mounting point for a 2.5 inch SSD. I also really like how instead of extending the top portion of the shroud all the way back to the wall, the Darkbase 900 now has an extended cable pass-through area at the base of the motherboard. Because often motherboards have lots of connection points down at the bottom, especially high-end ones like this Zenith Extreme, having one or two cable cutouts sometimes doesn't cut it. And I like not having to worry about pre-routing all of my front panel headers because I'm worried I won't have access to them once the power supply goes in. But speaking of the power supply installation, that is one of the drawbacks of this design. Be Quiet apparently could not engineer a way to insert the power supply from the rear, the backside, or the bottom, so the only way to get it in is to actually remove this shroud entirely. This involves several screws and much more time than is usually allocated to this task. And companies like Cooler Master have tried this approach only to walk it back in later revisions of the case because it's rather inconvenient. Still though, I think overall I'd rather have the shroud than not, and I think as long as people are aware that they have to install their power supply this way, they could plan around it accordingly. The interior redesign also extends to these modular bay covers, the same thing we saw with the Dark Base 700. These covers allow for the installation of up to five 3.5 inch hard drive cages to go with the two that are below down under the shroud, meaning that power users with huge storage arrays 
will feel right at home here with no shortage of drive mounts. Just be warned, however, that only three add-on sleds come included in the box, so if you need to populate all five, you do need to buy two extras. You can also pop these covers out at up to three different depths to allow for cable routing, as I've done here, and you'll also need to do so if you choose to go with an EATX motherboard, as you can see the orange grommets are almost entirely covered up. The top space remains open, although it is mostly obscured if you choose to leave the double optical drive bay installed as it comes from the factory, although I do prefer the cleaner look. The included LED lighting strips are now 12 volt RGB compatible, meaning you can connect them up to most motherboards. What I've chosen to do is to take advantage of the included fan and lighting control hub and route all applicable cables back this way so that I only have to connect one fan lead and one RGB plug to my motherboard's headers, making for a much cleaner overall install. The fan controller has two switches on it, one for each set of four PWM headers, where you can choose from silence or performance according to your needs. Other new revisions include a USB 3.1 Gen 2 Type-C front panel port to go along with one of the USB-A ports now being swapped over to quick charge. You can control the lighting from here, although if you have your RGB controller routed to the motherboard, like I do, you don't need to worry about this button. The included fans can also now run at up to 1400 RPM instead of 1000, providing significantly better airflow when performance mode is selected, although at the expense of some additional noise. The front and bottom of the chassis have removable dust filters, although the top does not. This is not an issue most of the time as the top fan mounts are traditionally configured as exhaust, but if you like to go rogue and invert your airflow, just be aware that you'll be blowing a lot of dust right into the case. For liquid cooling support, it doesn't get much better outside of boutique cases or behemoths like the aforementioned Enthu Elite. The Darkbase Pro 900 can fit up to 420 millimeter radiators at the front and on the top with sufficient room for fan mounting on the interior or the exterior of the chassis rails. You also get a universal pump mounting bracket included in the accessory box and one of the modular panels on the power supply shroud pops off to allow for more room for radiator installation at the front. Right now, I just went with a 360 millimeter Enermax Lictec TR4 AIO, one of the biggest units on the market, and it looks pretty puny mounted up top with plenty of room left to spare. Taking a quick look around back, despite my improper routing of the 24 pin cable on top of the metal bracket instead of under it, there's still plenty of room back here to do basically whatever you need. Overall depth is, I guess, just about average, but given the extreme amount of tie down points and cable routing aids combined with lots of small places to tuck excess wiring, cable management shouldn't really be an issue if you put even just a little bit of effort into it. You also get another spot to mount a storage device if for some reason you've run out of room. If you're at all worried if your components will fit in here, well, don't. The Darkbase Pro 900 fits up to the largest EATX motherboards, the tallest air coolers, the longest, heaviest, saggiest graphics cards, and power supplies up to 284 millimeters, which I'm not sure even exist. If the system you're looking at inside of here looks slightly familiar, that's because these are the guts of the unfortunately dearly departed Project Baron. I wanted to put together an EATX build that needed a fair bit of cabling room and cooling capacity in order to really stress test this case and get a real feel for the build process, which I'm happy to say was fairly easy. With the exception of having to remove the shroud to install the power supply, there were no surprises along the way. Everything fit right, could be routed cleanly, and looked great when completed. Working in a case this large definitely has its benefits, and the Darkbase Pro 900 would gladly welcome beefy SLI setups or complicated custom water cooling loops. One thing I think could be improved in this case though is airflow. I understand that silent operation is the main goal here and one that Be Quiet achieves remarkably well. Even with six fans cranking away, cooling an overclocked 1950X, and the GPU fans blowing to cool the 1080 Ti while gaming, this build is noticeably quieter than my previous test build inside the Deepcool Arc 90. 
The sound dampening foam on the inside of the body panels does a great job of keeping much of the ambient noise trapped inside the case. So much so that I've actually been editing a lot of videos recently without headphones on just because I can. However, this does come with a price. The Darkbase Pro 900 has this trademark airflow venting running in the entire perimeter. And in theory, this should at least do an adequate job of allowing the internals to breathe. But if you look a little bit closer, you can actually see plastic supports that increase panel rigidity, but almost entirely block off exactly where you need intake and exhaust to go. There are also comically small airflow slits cut at the top panel, but these do virtually nothing. Even with a 360 millimeter AIO bolted on, I couldn't run my 1950X at anything near max overclock. When I had this chip in Project Baron, it ran a 24 seven overclock of 4.1 gigahertz and I didn't break 50C while stressed. So I know it's capable of that clock speed. However, I could not get an all core overclock stable at anything over 3.8 gigahertz. And so I kind of decided that maybe it's just better to leave it at stock and let certain cores boost up to four gigahertz on its own. Even though the Liktec TR4 has a cooling capacity of 500 watts, it seems like the lack of fresh air hitting the radiator has really affected the ability of this unit to cool. Even with that being said though, the Darkbase Pro 900 Revision 2 is a fantastic premium ATX full tower that provides enormous flexibility, modularity, and yes, value, even at a cost of about $250. The fit and finish of the parts here make the entire unit look almost seamless, and the premium materials, well thought out main compartment, and new features added to the Revision 2 model make for a great showpiece. If you're planning on running lower powered or non-overclock components in here, which is unlikely, or if you could figure out a way to just get a bit more airflow going on, which is definitely possible with a little ingenuity, you should definitely consider the Darkbase Pro 900 for your next build. That is, if your next build can stomach the relatively high MSRP. Thanks for watching guys, get subscribed to the channel if you like this video and you wanna see more just like it, check out the merchandise store linked down below in the video description. And as always, thanks for watching.